Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Here we are, back again with the power supply somebody else made. Well, we've since modified the thing, so uh, we've almost reached a point at which I can say I made this. <laughs> well, not quite, but uh, anyway, today we're going to do some more modifications in this thing. Uh, that being... We're going to add a proper grounded power jack for safety. I mean, the power cord this, uh, this came with is, uh, well, it's too short. That's the first thing. As you can see, it's, uh, it's already kind of short. And uh, it's, uh, it's melted in one place, so there is still some insulation left, but definitely not enough. This uh, rubber affair right there is uh, not... Uh, not really trustworthy, should I say. And so we are going to add one of these uh, computer-style power jacks and uh, get the whole thing grounded properly and everything. And, uh, well, let's get on with it. And here we are. As you can see, I've uh, drawn the outlines of the power jack onto the back of the housing. It is important that you move the thing down towards the bottom. If you uh, have it like right up there, uh, chances are that you're just going to bend the back part rather than uh, pulling out the plug of the jack when uh, when something goes wrong and the cable gets too short or whatever. So uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky because of course everything is inside of there. I'm not going to take it out, obviously. So I've got to be kind of careful. Uh, with uh, drilling the holes and cutting that out, but it should be possible. And there we have the hole all cut out. Fortunately, it turned out uh, quite a bit bigger than necessary, but uh, oh well. All done with the help of uh, quite a few tools, including my latest toy. I got this thing at a, at a sale. One of our stores, our I think you call them Home Depot stores, is closing down and uh, Got this thing for 55 euro. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. Uh, of course, made in China, but uh, it's definitely all right. Good quality, I have to say. Well, in the end, I spend more time watching TV than uh, working on the power supply. But uh, there it is, the result of uh, tonight's work. The jack is in its place. As I already said, the hole turned out to be a little bit too big. You might be able to see it down there, but it's not a disaster. Uh, we are going to uh, cover up that hole at a later point. Not sure if that's going to happen in this video or not, but it's definitely going to happen. Here we have the connections and... Uh, okay, lock the focus on that. Camera doesn't like to focus on that by itself. There it is power cord has been hooked up to that. It's the original power cord that already was in there, uh, which is okay. It's uh, It works. Safety ground. Uh, this is not the right kind of color for a safety ground. Uh, you do want to do that in a different way if you're doing it. I just did it because, uh, well, I'm kind of low on wires, especially the thicker ones. So uh, that's all I had. But um, it has been attached to the safety ground of that jack and with a, uh, with a bit of solder. Let me see if I can focus on that a little bit better. And there it is. As you can see, I uh, used abrasive paper to expose some of the metal and then I uh, heated up the soldering iron as high as it'll go and uh, then I was able to solder the wire to this housing. So we now have a very, very safe connection. So, that's about it for tonight. Now this uh, thing is uh, pretty much safe to use. Um, I don't know, I have a feeling the, connector, the connection between the transformer and the chassis could be a bit better, but um, anyway, I'll worry about that later. Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome back to our little modding somebody else's power supply adventure. Now, in the past, we have added this outboard extension to the original heatsink in the unit, 
because that is just way too small for that voltage regulator if you really want to use it at the maximum current that this thing can do. However, uh, I was experimenting with uh, some other circuits that uh, were all suggested in the data sheet of this chip, the LM317, and uh, seems like, uh, oh, there we are. I actually now finally do have the data sheet for this, which is kind of a miracle. There we have it. The adjustable regulator with improved ripple rejection. This is basically what this circuit right here is. I was talking about that. So here it is with a bit of an improved potentiometer circuitry. Of course it has that uh, maximum output voltage preset thing added to it. Anyway, with a little bit of circuitry that I am intending to add tonight, the heatsink, even with the outboard extension, is not going to be big enough anymore. And uh, quite honestly, this uh, 5 volt regulator could probably benefit from a heatsink upgrade too. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, replace this outboard heatsink right there with a bit of a bigger one, which is this heatsink right here. And if you're now wondering, isn't that a bit of an overkill? Well, I don't think so. I want to be able to use this power supply without having to worry about anything getting too warm. And uh, this thing is basically going to be my insurance that I can put this uh, power supply through hell and back and it's not even going to feel uncomfortable. So, uh, going to put this on here. Also, uh, I do happen to have this lying around. It has been lying around for years and now I can finally use it. And uh, it came out of an old amplifier, one of those STK chip amplifier affairs. You still see where that chip was sitting. Now the one thing I'll have to do, I'll have to slightly modify this thing. Uh, so you can see it um, It does not... Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit too long, so I'll have to cut off these two segments uh, so that the uh, power jack will still fit into there. And here we are, a bit later. I cut off those two segments, so now the heatsink does fit on there. And I also drilled some holes, six mounting holes and three holes to uh, hold chips in place, uh, voltage regulators. And uh, I had some fun with my, uh, with my new toy that you've uh, just seen a couple of minutes ago. I might be able to see that. I even went ahead and cleaned up the edges of those holes that I drilled. It's very, very neat. <laughs> Using the heatsink as a template, I now drilled the holes into the uh, into the back of the housing. As you can see, that's looking more and more like a Swiss cheese. Anyway, um, <laughs> there it is, and um, I'll now have to uh, put some heatsink grease around the places where the chips are going to be mounted, so uh, that we don't have any kind of a barrier between uh, the back of the unit and the heatsink. I could, um, of course, I could cut big holes into the back and mount the chips directly onto the heatsink. The problem is, for one thing, I don't have a, um, a hole saw that big. And the other thing is, uh, if I would then ever decide to repurpose this housing, I'd be stuck with these uh, big holes which, of course, are uh, a lot more of an issue than, uh, than these small ones. Anyway, uh, and now you're also going to see why I was uh, saying we're going to cover up that hole right there and that it's not going to be a problem. If the thing is mounted, the hole is gone. Anyway, now I want to mount this thing and uh, well, hopefully I have enough heat sink grease to do this properly because, uh, um, well, my supply is kind of low. Well, that was just enough. Uh, I think I got enough heat sink grease on here, around the chips, quite a bit. You know, I, I said to myself, uh, you're going to do this properly, and uh, then you can uh, do redo the, the heat sink grease on the chips uh, on the inside of the, of the housing uh, later on in case it's necessary. But this, of course, uh, 
you know, it's a good idea to do it properly now because uh, later on you'd have to take out all the screws holding the thing in place and uh, that would take up quite a bit of time. And here we are a bit later and uh, actually pretty late at night as you can see. And uh, well I am on holiday so uh, I don't really have to care but I do have things to do tomorrow morning so uh, can't stay up forever. But uh, here we are, bit of a bit of a shock. It's uh, definitely a good thing that I'm now pretty much done uh, working on the housing mechanically, drilling things and stuff. Because uh, it actually seemed like uh, I lost the voltmeter, but uh, luckily I took the glass cover off, or the plastic cover, and uh, played around with a needle, and I managed to get it back um, to free it up. Because you know before it was just completely stuck and it wouldn't move. Luckily it works again, so that's a good thing. Anyway, uh, so you can see I mounted the voltage regulator. I know that's not sitting on there properly, but uh, it is insulated properly and uh, it um, it will be redone eventually. I'll have to get some new heat sink racers. Not really enough on there, uh, that's for sure. And um, we uh, have the provisions for uh, more chips, more voltage regulators, right there and right there. Heatsink is being held in place by uh, six screws. And if I can just turn this around, ouch, that heatsink heat is kind of sharp. If this was an industrial made power supply, they'd definitely have to uh, do something about the sharp edges. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, that's looking pretty neat pretty neat so anyway uh, that's basically done we're now back to uh, how things were before I started replacing the heatsink so uh, now or, uh, well actually tomorrow I am going to start adding additional circuitry to this unit <laughs> 